I finally played Sheeran 5 Plus in my game in orgy. Find out my tentative first impressions in episode 134 of Sheeran. The Wanderer. Buenas tardes, mi amigos y amigas. I am Doofy, and uh, was I gonna go meld a sword? No, wait. I don't think I have an unbreakable pickaxe yet, do I? Yeah, I better get one of those. Go all the way to Golden City and just finish the run. Oh, uh, I think... I think I have like a Bufus Cleaver. I guess I could meld that. All my melding jars are in Mountain Top Town. I do remember that. Huh, and then I'd have to backtrack. Nah, I'm just gonna go finish this run and uh, try to get all the swords I need to meld so I don't have to make a bunch of trips. I think I have a Bufus Cleaver on me, but I don't have an Unbreakable Pickaxe. And I definitely want to meld that on, so... I'll go make one of those. Wait, Ketchy wants to talk to me. You wanted me to demonstrate the bowling ball technique, sir? Uh, nah, not, not on me. How would you even... There's only one hole, what? Two on the scroot, one in the moat, sir. <laughs> I don't even want to know what the moat is. Oh, it's the only word I could think of that rhymed with scroot. <laughs> Two on the scroot, one in the moat. Oh, it's mysterious, Ketchy, but I'm, I'm not interested in, in having you show that move to me. Just tell me how you do it. That's all I wanted to know. All right, so we're done with this run. Uh, this is the fastest way to unlock things if you just want to unlock all the bonus dungeons as quickly as possible. You just run through using the wagon and then go straight to Golden City and you're in a new run. I believe uh, it's a good cheat to get the Scroll of Destruction too. You can just finish the run with really high powered equipment and then just run through and unlock it. Oh, phase final puzzle. I miss you so much, but I can't go back. <laughs> oh, I'll lose all my items. I don't think I ever put away the uh, Herb of Invisibility. That's, that's important to have later on to level up sub ma'am. So I should probably put that away. Maybe some of this other stuff. I really didn't clean up my storehouse as much as I was planning on doing either. <laughs> oh, classic doofy procrastination. I'm proud of myself though for making this episode within a week. My throat is all messed up because I've been sick and also I had a tube down my throat during the surgery and it scratched my trachea. So I know Ketchy is supposed to sound like Sulu from the original series, but everyone's going to sound exactly like me for a while, because it's kind of painful to just talk. But I have come back to make this episode. That's dedication, Holmes. One of my New Year's resolutions is to average at least one episode a week. I know, wow, one episode a week, that's 15 minutes, whoa, big resolution, Doofy. Alright, I don't appreciate your sass, anonymous straw man viewer. It's a big deal for me to consistently do something, because I'm kind of a slacker. So, <laughs> I'm going to try to average. So that means maybe some weeks will be two, and some weeks will be zero. But on average, I'm going to try to do one a week. Come along with me, Cyberman. Get the scent. Get the scent. Now attack! <laughs> uh, Alright, I'm going to leave little B alone. And go craft myself a weapon. This week, I did want to talk about the gaming orgy because I played Shirin to tough it doff. <laughs> I guess that's how you pronounce the initials. And Hard Boiled Sugar and Poke Force are talking about Shirin to tough it doff. And they wanted to know my impressions. I only played it for two days, so I'm going to hold off on my final judgment until I've beaten more of the game and basically played it more. But I'll give really quickly my initial impressions of the game. And first of all, is it a good game? Yes, it is. Is it better than Sharon 3? Much better. Is it worth buying a Vita or a PlayStation TV? I got a PlayStation TV off of Amazon for 40 bucks, which lets you play Vita games on your TV. And as long as you have an old uh, DualShock line around, it's a great deal. Uh, you still have to get a memory card, but that's how I've been playing uh, to tough it doff. That, that, that's kind of silly. I'll just call it Sharon 5 Plus. So, I played it for two days, I beat it, I think it's a good game. Is it better than this game? It depends, it depends, really. I 
think a good metaphor would be Street Fighter. So, Shirin 5 Plus to Shirin the Wanderer for the DS, this game, is kind of like Street Fighter 5 to Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. That's sort of the way I feel about it at this point. Now remember, I haven't played it that much. So, does Shirin 5 Plus have more content and better graphics? And more monsters and more items than this game. Yes. Does it have more complicated game systems? And uh, even more companions, I believe. Yeah, it has more companions. Yes. Is it a better game, though? Uh, if you're like a preteen or a teen right now, then yeah, it probably is a better game for you. But if you're an old fogey like Doofy Doo, it just, it has some big shoes to fill, you know? Like, Street Fighter V is a good game. Graphics are good, gameplay's good. It's carefully designed, some of the new characters are good. But, Super Street Fighter II Turbo is like the ultimate version of the game that created the entire genre. Like, every 2D fighter exists because Street Fighter II was such a smash hit. And in the same way, Every console roguelike, not even just uh, Mystery Dungeon games, every game that's like a roguelike on the console sort of traces back its lineage to this game, the Super Famicom version of this game. So it's... this game is kind of iconic, and it's... it's almost impossible, I think, to make a sequel to this. I mean, that that lives up to the legend that is this game, in my mind. And again, you know, some of that is nostalgia. So, Shirin 5 Plus isn't sort of the revolutionary, groundbreaking, genre-defining moment that this game was when it first came out on Super Famicom. And you know how I feel about iterative sequels. Of course, more of a good thing is a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that they made Shirin 5 Plus as kind of a... You know, it was the anniversary of Sharon the Wanderer, so they just kind of made it a greatest hit selection with a lot of the monsters and a lot of the items. And there's tons of bonus dungeons. I'm glad there's a lot of bonus dungeons. A lot of the new items are cool. I love the jar that tells horrible jokes and makes all the monsters paralyzed with laughter. And uh, I think Jen or Gen is probably my favorite companion in any Sharon game. He's like, what would happen if one of the felines from Monster Hunter just let himself go? <laughs> so I, I love that character. And uh, a lot of the items are good. A lot of the new monsters are pretty cool and well designed. They took my advice and made the giant enemy crab incredibly like impervious to anything. They went even more extreme than I did in my redesign. Which uh, I think was pretty cool that some of the suggested changes I made actually happened. <laughs> hey, I feel a sudden need to make out with Ketchy. Must resist urge to French kiss Cyber Ma'am and Ketchy. <laughs> uh, I better move on before I give in to my baser instincts. So yeah, there's a lot of quality of life improvements or I guess quality of death, it would be in Sharon. The improvements made to the game. They throw like undo grass and uh... Oh, where is she? And uh... Synthesis pots at you. There she is. Like they're candy in the game, so it's pretty much impossible to get hurt. Alright, Kitchy, I want you to give me a massage. <laughs> and then just just talk to me, Blacksmith Apprentice. Talk to me while well, Kitchy gives me a central massage. <laughs> that reminds me, I, uh, as soon as I figure out that a girl is not very intelligent, it, it's like a boner killer, so I have to mute any pornography I watch and play a tape of someone, some intelligent woman talking in the background. <laughs> Too much information? Too bad! That reminded me of what I was having catchy massage me while Blacksmith's Apprentice talks. Uh, yeah, so I, there's a lot of things I like about the game. Oh, one thing I don't like about the game. If you use the item generating tanukis in the basement of the town, 
those items, those new items you make, appear in the bonus dungeons, which totally destroys the balance. So, if you care at all about game balance, don't make any items till you're done with all the bonus dungeons. I had to immediately restart a new file once I figured that out. Also, in true doofy doo fashion, I made some weird set of rules so the game would be fun for me. I didn't use any synthesis jars, which are the equivalent of a melding jar. I didn't use any revival herbs. I think I used the undo grass, I believe. But other than that, I didn't use any tagging of my weapon and shield and all that stuff. Because I wanted to see uh, how fun it was just to go through the game. And I did die on the boss the first time I got to the boss. I like the boss. The boss fight, the first boss fight in the game is very good. So it's a good compromise between being vulnerable to items and uh, being able also to get rid of status ailments. So that was a good fight. It was actually exciting. And then the second time I fought the boss, uh, I beat the boss. So I'm hoping that there's more to the main game. But it seems like the game is rushing you to that achiever point where you have overpowered equipment and you can never lose it. It's like the game is trying to rush you to that point. And I, I, I appreciate, you know, that they're trying to make it easier for newcomers and there's a path for people to play the game who aren't, you know, who are frustrated by permadeath and losing all their stuff. I, I appreciate those changes because you don't, you don't have to use those new items if you don't want to. But I, I don't know, I feel like some of the experience is missing because the pace of this game is much more leisurely and you're, you encounter things in this game like 10, 12, 15 hours in, you know, you're still running into a new cutscene and new dungeons and unlocking things. And I know for a veteran of Sheeran, they just want to hurry up and get to the bonus dungeons. But, as I'm sure you've noticed if you've been watching these talk through episodes, I like to kind of take my time and savor the journey. So I think I'm going to take it slow through Sheeran 5+. Plus. Hopefully it'll make a better impression on me as time goes on. But I can definitely say it is worth buying a Vita just to play that game. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and save here. Next episode I'll pick up my Unbreakable Pickaxe and meld a good weapon and start my run through Tainted Path at last. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. A few months ago, me and Pants Weasel, we were itching to start a long gaming orgy, and we decided to play an enhanced sequel about the wanderings of a rogue. And we wondered, will this be the best game in the world, or will it blow? Well, Sharon 5 Plus isn't the best game in the world, but it's a good tribute. A worthy sequel to the best game in the world? Definitely. But not the best game in the world, no way. This game right here, this is the best motherfucking game in the world. All right. Two on the scrout, one in the moat, sir.